The Harvard Negotiation Project was founded by William Urey and Roger Fisher. They co-authored Getting to Yes. I recently read the book and want to share the main takeaways. The book states that negotiating is not about sharing things 50-50 or insisting on your way or my way. Not about winning or losing. By asking who wins, you've lost. Negotiation is about what? You'll see once I give some instances. In a library, two men argue over whether to open the window for fresh air or close it to protect their papers from wind. You do what? Do you leave it partially open or closed? After listening to both, the librarian opens a window in another room to let in fresh air without disturbing the papers. Both parties are pleased. Another scenario. Two people want to share a cake, but can't decide how to split it. Any way you cut it, they'll both whine that the other side received more. You do what? Ask one person to cut the cake and the other to pick first. Since the cutter knows the opposite side chose first, he splits it evenly to avoid a smaller portion. A final example. Two youngsters fight over an orange. The mom slices the orange in half and gives each child half. One kid eats the fruit and throws away the peel, while the other bakes a cake and tosses away the fruit. By asking why they wanted the orange, the parent could have given both kids 100%, but they only got 50%. These examples show that negotiating is about finding a solution that pleases both parties without damaging the relationship. You do it how? How can you find smart, practical solutions like those we saw? This four-step approach will make you a master negotiator. Step 1. Prioritize interests over positions. Remember the two men squabbling over a library window. It shows how people focus too much on their positions in negotiations. Focus on interests rather than positions. Focusing on interests has apparent benefits but is difficult. Clear positions. Concealed or unclear interests. How do you identify opposing interests? Simply ask, why? Why do they want it? Consider their viewpoint. Openly discuss their interests once you uncover them. When understood, people listen better. They think their understanders are knowledgeable and compassionate. Show you care and understand their interests to get them to listen to yours. You must also express your interests. The opposite side may not know them. Ask yourself, if they agree with me tomorrow, what do I want them to do? To turn your interests into possibilities. Step 2. Be fair. You can grasp what the other side wants, but disputes will always arise. Your landlord wants greater rent, but you want cheaper. Use objective criteria to decide instead of arguing. Remember the cake example. When two guys couldn't share a cake, letting one divide it and the other select first was fair. Objective criteria are free of bias. Market prices, legal requirements, expert judgments, and mutually agreed upon fair standards are examples. Negotiations typically fail because individuals feel pressured. However, saying let's check the rules or regulations moves the focus from your desires to the rules. Instead of you, the rules demand it. If your house construction contract doesn't mention foundation depth and the contractor suggests two feet, but you want five feet, don't compromise. Instead, Maybe I'm incorrect. Perhaps two feet suffices. Do government standards exist for these soils? Is there an earthquake risk? Where can we find standards to answer this? How to utilize this principle effectively? Before starting, agree on fair standards with the opposite side. Suppose you want a high price and I want a cheap one. Determine a fair price. We should use what standards? Focusing on fair standards can turn conflicting interests into a common aim. Step 3. Create mutually beneficial options. Think about the kids battling over an orange. They could have gotten 100% of what they wanted instead of splitting it 50-50. This example emphasizes the need to create win-win negotiation possibilities. How do you innovate? So how? Meet with your side or the other and brainstorm all the solutions. First, 
Let the ideas flow without judging or selecting them. Brainstorm apart from collect. Choose a few participants, modify the surroundings, create an informal tone, and specify the goal for brainstorming. Start with the best ideas after brainstorming and debate improvements. Negotiation disagreements can solve difficulties, contrary to popular belief. Each side sought various parts of the orange, therefore a clever solution was conceivable. It's ludicrous to think your differences caused the problem. They inspire inventive solutions. Step 4. Separate people from the issue. Imagine a vertical line dividing a person before negotiating. Both the person and the problem are there. Always prioritize people above problems. Negotiators are humans first. Negotiation involves being soft on people, yet tough on issues. Often we are easy on the person and the situation. Thus we don't obtain what we desire. Or we're hard on the problem, but also hard on the person, ruining the relationship. Appreciate the effort and compliment when possible. At every negotiating stage ask, am I paying enough attention to the people problem? Egos are often threatened by different opinions. They see the world through their lens, often misrecognizing reality. They often misinterpret your words and don't say what they mean. Remember, you must solve their and your own issues. Your wrath and fury might also hinder agreement. Your perceptions may be biased and you may not listen or communicate well. Building rapport with the other side before negotiations might help avoid people issues. A friend is simpler to negotiate with than a stranger. Please arrive early to socialize and stay thereafter. Discover their preferences. These informal encounters simplify future discussions. Study after study shows that knowing the opposing side boosts effectiveness by 25 to 30 percent. You may think these four phases are fair and nice, but what if the opposing side isn't fair? Imagine they utilize filthy tactics. If they're stronger, if they attack me personally, how to handle each issue. Dirty techniques first. Lie and pressure methods are used. Recognizing these techniques generally neutralizes them. Say it. Joe, you and Ted seem to be playing good policeman and bad cop. Ask for a break to get on track. Mentioning the approach reduces its effectiveness and may make the opposite side fear losing you. Just asking can end it. However, be cautious. Avoid personal attacks. Address the issue. Instead of, you set me facing the sun purposely, add, the sun is distracting my eyes. Can we reschedule? My concentration is impaired. If they're stronger, negotiate without a gunfight if the opposing side has large guns. The finest thing you can do is create your batna. Consider your reaction to a job interview with no other offers. Consider how difficult pay negotiations would be. Compare it to entering an interview with two other job offers. The difference is power. You have more influence if you can leave a negotiation easily. Developing your batna helps you define a minimum acceptable agreement and may raise it. Prepare your batna before bargaining. Say, let's negotiate first and see what happens. Without a batna, you negotiate blindly. If they attack you personally, things get harder when they attack you instead of the issue. You want fairness, yet they destroy your ideas. Self-defense is natural yet pointless. You push, they push back, and you're stuck. You do what? Use negotiating jujitsu to avoid attacks. So how? 1. Look behind them. Do more than say yes or no when they ask. Ask why they want it. Know what matters to them. 2. If they reject everything you say, ask, If you were me, what would you do? They will imagine your situation and offer options. 3. Ask for feedback. Ask what's wrong instead of defending your opinions. This will reveal their interests. I'll end this video with a terrific story about negotiating. In 1964, an American father and his 12-year-old son played Frisbee in Hyde Park, London. Few English people had seen a Frisbee, so a tiny audience assembled. Eventually, a man asked, Sorry to disturb? You've been watched for 15 minutes. 
Who wins? Asking who wins in negotiations is like asking in marriage. The aim isn't to win. The real goal is to compromise and satisfy both sides. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.